Hi there, I'm Ty Collins, back for another edition of the Lawrence University Career Center podcast, where each month we catch up with Lawrence alumni to find out what's going on in their careers. And today we are joined by Lily Atkinson from the Lawrence class of 2018. Lily earned degrees in geology and chemistry, also studied music while at Lawrence. While a student, she was part of Delta Gamma, Fiddlers of Lawrence University, and Model United Nations. Since graduation, she's lived in Colorado, India, San Francisco, and currently calls Chicago home, where she works as a veterinary technician for the Royal Treatment Veterinary Clinic. Lily, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Thanks for having me. I'd like to start out today with all the places you've lived and worked since leaving Lawrence. You've certainly logged some serious miles in the last four years. Can you tell us about the different opportunities you've had around the world? Yeah, so um, right after I graduated in 2018, um, that September, I believe it was, I started my first internship in um, the Curriconti National Recreation Area and the Black Canyon National Park. That was in um, Colorado, near the town of Gunnison, but basically I was living in the National Recreation Area, kind of far away from everything, which was really beautiful and really interesting. And I was working with the park system. It was a program called Geologists in the Park. That was National Parks and AmeriCorps program. It was about three months long, and I was doing like a hy hydrological study. Um, in the park, um, I was sampling water from different springs that I had found using Google Earth and analyzing them to get their isotopic signatures and then kind of creating like an isotopic graph of the park's groundwater. And that, that was really, really cool and beautiful. It was definitely a bit isolating because I was living pretty much in the middle of nowhere with like one other person that was working in the parks. Yeah. But it was so beautiful to be in Colorado through the fall with the leaves changing and then the snow coming. I learned how to snowboard, which was super fun. That was a really awesome experience. And then um, I came home to San Francisco, where I'm from, for a few weeks for the holidays. And then I went to India, um, where I did another internship at a, a foundation called the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. It's based in Chennai which is a huge city in Southern India. I think it's like 10 million people or some like crazy number. Um, and I was living there and I was doing like a soil analysis project. So I was trying to compare like from two different locations, one in Chennai and one in Pondicherry um, at the Research Foundation, comparing their kind of soil signature when it, when it come, came to like fungi, bacteria, as well as their like different elements that were in the soil and I was trying to compare because Pondicherry had really fresh water a really great water source and Chennai had really um, alkaline water so the groundwater was depleted and the water from the ocean was coming in and their water source was not that great so I was comparing the quality of the soils in the two locations and that was work for the foundation they wanted me to do and that was very very different <laughs> because I basically went from Colorado being very isolated in a park to one of the biggest cities in India and just having people around all the time, which was, it was really cool and definitely a lot of like culture shock and, you know, adjustment there, but I was really glad to do it. And yeah. And then after that came back to San Francisco, with my family and the pandemic happened. So I was kind of, I worked from home for a few years for, for a nonprofit. And then about a year and a half ago, little less, maybe about a year ago, I moved to Chicago and now here I am. Had you always been a traveler or is that just how things worked out when you left Lawrence? No, I definitely have always loved traveling. I've been super fortunate um, to get a lot of opportunities to travel when I was growing up as a kid with my family. We did a bunch of trips just around the world um, and I knew that I wanted opportunities to travel more by myself and really experience living in different cultures and different countries. You're currently a veterinary technician. Uh, I'm seeing more Lawrence students who are studying biology expressing interest in the veterinary field. Can you tell us more about what you do now and more broadly, the types of opportunities available in the veterinary field? And is this a field that's growing as far as you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm super, super glad to hear that people are getting interested in veterinary work because there's a high demand for it. 
we don't have enough doctors, we don't have enough specialists. So many people have pets now and everyone's booked up super far. So I'm really glad people have interest in going to this field. Um, in terms of what I do, um, I'm basically a veterinary technician at um, the Royal Treatment Veterinary Center, which is an integrative clinic. So it's really interesting because we have Western medicine and also um, more holistic medicine that we um, try and incorporate into our treatment plans. So that's really interesting. I've, I didn't know much about holistic medicine or Chinese medicine at all before working here. And I've learned uh, a good amount of it in terms of like Chinese supplements, herbal supplements. We also have like acupuncture and chiropractic adjustments for animals. So that's really cool. And in terms of what I do, like on the daily basis is well, most days I'll work with the doctor um, going into their appointments and making sure the doctor has everything they need, whether it's, you know, prescriptions being set up, um, injectable drugs, like lab tests being lined up. I talk to the clients a lot. So they bring in their pet and I'm asking what's going on. What do you need help with? Are you due for any vaccines? That kind of stuff. Um, and just make sure everything flows really easily from the client to the doctor and everything gets handled in that appointment. Sometimes I'll also be a rehab technician. So we have underwater treadmills for dogs and cats um, wow. that are, sometimes they just go for exercise. Sometimes they have had surgery and they're working up their muscles, that kind of stuff in the underwater treadmill. And that's super fun because they're so cute with their little life vests um, walking around. <laughs> and sometimes the other job we'll do is I can do reception here and there if it's needed. And I'll also do, um, I'll be a lab technician. So I'm running blood samples, urine samples, packaging up samples I need to get sent out to other labs. And that's really interesting because I have had a lot of lab experience going to Lawrence and doing all kinds of um, lab classes there. So that's definitely a comfortable space for me. And then, yeah, in terms of other types of opportunities in the veterinary field, there's so many pretty much anything you can think about for human specialists, like eye doctor, cardiologist, nutritionist, like they have all those for pets also. And then there's also, you know, exotic pets, with zoo, veterinary work, farm animals, marine animals. There's also like, you could work more in labs if that's what you're interested or go to the management course, be like a practice manager. We do, you know, I mentioned we do acupuncture and chiropractic. We also have a animal massage person that does animal massages so there's so many different directions one can take with it and I'm also still figuring out what I want to do what I want to focus on mostly. Regarding some of those more holistic services your center offers like the acupuncture the cold laser light therapy the massage therapy the underwater treadmill uh, I don't see those things at most veterinary centers is yours kind of unique in offering those? I think it's becoming more popular, but it's definitely not the most common type of clinic, which is why I was, I didn't know a lot about it when I first started working there. But, you know, there's definitely limitations to Western medicine. And we do like to try and minimize the invasiveness of our treatments because the animals are really, they're really skilled at healing themselves. Most of the time, we just need to figure out which ways we need to kind of support their own natural healing abilities. You've been in this job for over a year. Tell me what you find most rewarding about your work, what's most difficult, uh, and what are some things that students who are considering work in this field could be doing now to get themselves ready for a future in veterinary medicine? In terms of what is most rewarding, I really love how it's, it's really like team-based Everyone I work with at the clinic kind of is all working towards a common goal, which is helping our clients and getting what they need. And so everyone is really always working together and there for each other and helping each other out. And I love that. And I think that's what it was, what was missing when I was doing the kind of field work and lab work that I was doing in my other internships. Um, it was very isolating and I wasn't working on a team. I was just doing a lot of things for myself. Um, and so coming into this job and getting to know all my coworkers, they're all awesome people. They're hard workers. They're very, you know, compassionate. And we all work on a team together. And that's really rewarding when, when we come together and, you know, do something really great for our, our patients and our clients. In terms of difficulty, one of the more difficult things I'm trying to learn how to navigate is it's kind of self-sacrificing career. Like 
people are working super hard. They stay late every day. We often work through our lunches. It can be very demanding. Um, and I'm still looking for kind of a balance of, you know, where do I draw my boundaries and when do I leave like on time or when do I take days off? Because I also need to remember to take care of myself. Even when, you know, my other coworkers are staying late all the time, you know, that can be hard. But it also can be a good thing because everyone really does care. And then in terms of preparing for this type of career, you know, I didn't, I didn't really do this when I was in school or when I was a student because I really had no idea what I wanted to do. But I would say people who are students now could try exploring these different fields, like by volunteering or getting an internship. There's plenty of places um, that would take volunteers, whether it's at an animal shelter or at an actual clinic or at a zoo. There's so many places where you can volunteer just to see what you like about it, what you maybe don't like about it before you're fully committed to a position. Um, and that way you're also making connections. So if you really like the place you volunteered at, you know, if there's a job opening, maybe that's something you'd be interested in, as well as just, you know, seeing what is out there and, and what you might like. And that's great advice for basically every occupation. Volunteering, internships, job shadows are great ways to try out a career before you commit to it. And I would think, too, uh, in the case of veterinary medicine, uh, an important skill to have or an important trait to have is the love of animals. I've seen a cat cross the screen a couple of times here already. I do have another cat. So I have two cats, me and two cats in my studio apartment. And the other one's much more shy. So she's just hanging back. <laughs> what are your cat's names? Um, Olive and Goldie. Olive and Goldie. Okay. So Olive has been the one crossing the screen, I bet. Yes. <laughs> As I mentioned at the outset, you studied geology and chemistry. Your first two jobs out of college with the National Park Service in Colorado and your position in India were definitely related to what you studied at Lawrence, but your current job is not directly related to your major. Do you see yourself returning to geology or chemistry at some point, or are you happy with where you are right now? I'm happy with where I am right now. Um, I'm not going to say that I will never go back to anything geology or chemistry related. Um, I'm kind of taking it like one year at a time in terms of deciding what I want to do. But, you know, chemistry is very related to veterinary work, especially in the sense that we're running lab samples and, you know, that kind of stuff is all relevant. Um, geology, I still love it. And it Definitely, I'm grateful for having, you know, depth of knowledge in that field because it just gives me such a, you know, better perspective on the planet and like this big rock that we all live on. I don't think about it like every single day like I used to, but I definitely will see a rock here and there and like appreciate it. <laughs> and that's a, a unique perspective that not everyone gets. But yeah, for right now, I love I'm really enjoying the veterinary field because I love being so close to animals every day. And it's also really, um, it's a social environment. And when I was doing chemistry and geology work, it wasn't as social. Like I wasn't talking to new people every day. I wasn't interacting with customers as much as I am now. And I think I do like that a lot more than I thought I would, I think. That's where I am right now. We'll see. Let's talk a bit more about your time at Lawrence how would you say Lawrence did in preparing you for uh, the world outside of Lawrence? This can be not only classroom experiences, but things outside the classroom, whether it be internships, clubs, sports, uh, relationships with other students, you name it. Yeah, I think Lawrence did a great job of encouraging us to be well-rounded and explore all different kinds of interests and in a way that um, that kind of led me to where I am today because I've, you know, I know I majored in geology and chemistry and what I'm doing now isn't totally there, but I know that being at Lawrence has prepared me to learn, to ask the right questions, um, to be curious about different areas. Um, and I knew that, you know, with that education, I could learn anything if I had to. And so, you know, I don't have as much biology experience in a classroom as some other people might, 
but I know that I know how to learn the right things, ask the right questions and get to that point. In terms of like, if you want more of like a specific class, I did think that analytical chemistry that I took with Professor Donahue was really helpful um, in the lab work I do now, because that's a class where it really teaches you like what matters when you're actually running real samples and to making sure that the results are going to be accurate. It helps you think about contamination, you know, the, the tools you're using, making sure everything's going to be accurate. And that was definitely really helpful when actually working with real life samples. Um, but in general, I think, you know, and the whole, you know, freshman studies class, which now I think is first year's studies, yeah. it really encourages all the students at Lawrence to be really strong in writing and investigating, um, which definitely has helped me in my life just in general. Sounds like you had a lot of positive experiences at Lawrence. Was there something Lawrence didn't teach you that you wish they had? The, the one thing that comes to mind right now is... Um, Part of being at Lawrence is that you live on campus all four years, you're on the meal plan, that kind of thing, um, which in a lot of ways is great. You know, all your friends are right there. You don't have to go very far to get to your classes, that kind of stuff. But once you leave college, you know, a lot of my friends had already rented their first apartments, had been on apartment hunting before, that kind of thing. And I hadn't, you know, I didn't really have to do that until I moved to Chicago. And those are definitely skills that it takes a little bit of getting used to and learning how to, you know, really move your life around and find the place you want to be in and pay rent, all that kind of stuff. So it would have been helpful maybe to get a taste of that earlier than, than Lawrence allowed me to. We do offer a series of programs in April geared specifically for seniors on some of those life skills like managing a budget and you know, getting insurance and those kind of things. And one of the sessions actually is all about finding apartments. So oh. perhaps we, we launched that after you left, Lawrence, but uh, sounds like there there is a need for that. I do want to get to uh, the music part of your life. Uh, like many Lawrence students, you had music as, as a part of your experience. You're a harpist. Do you still play? And if so, in what capacity, how often? Yeah, so... I will say the pandemic kind of limited my opportunities to play in a professional capacity. But before the pandemic, I was doing gigs now and then. I would play at, you know, holiday parties. Some um, I did a few like memorials, um, and that was that was really fun. I mean, not necessarily the memorial part, but just playing for people. Nowadays, I'm playing more. I'm still trying to find a nice balance between working and and playing and trying to incorporate more music into my life because I haven't been able to do it as much as I want to but I'll play with friends I'll play with family um it's really amazing just to have it to know that I can play music with people um and every time I meet someone who's a musician they want to you know they want to hear me play they want to you know do a jam session or something so at this point I'm doing a lot more just playing for fun um but I have been able to keep it up which I am happy about and at some point I do want to do more maybe I did I was actually going to join a community orchestra except for everything shut down right when I was trying to do that okay. so that was fortunate but at some point I will get back into that even though you haven't done music professionally, do you think having the music background, the music experience, the music education has been helpful in your scientific career? Yeah, actually, I guess based on what we were just talking about, when I applied to that Colorado internship in the first, like right off, right, I think I applied during college, actually, like the end of my senior year, it was a pretty competitive position. There were like over 60 people that applied for one internship. And the person who hired me told me that he hired me because he thought it was really cool that I played harp. Wow. <laughs> Completely related to what the job called for. Um, but he said, that was so interesting. I wanted to work with you. It showed that you must have been really well-rounded and following your interests and just an interesting person. And so I would say to everyone who's listening um, at Lawrence, who's, you know, pursuing something that's maybe cut completely unrelated to what they might do in the future. Anything that makes you who you are is going to be a desirable trait that, that people want to hire. I thought that was really, you know, relevant based on what people are learning at Lawrence and 
the diversity of things you can get from the school. I've heard variations on that a few times before where, uh, and it often is in the sciences actually, where having that music background along with it is is kind of a, an added incentive in hiring the person. And performers have a obviously a very creative way about them and a very creative and different way of thinking about things. And sometimes in, in those technical or those scientific fields, having that additional way to think, that creative way to think is is a benefit that, you know, many of the other more scientifically oriented folks don't have and it can be an advantage. Yeah. And that's, that's why I chose Lawrence in the first place when I was applying to colleges was the science was really good and the music was really good. And there's not a whole lot of schools where it holds them both. So, you know, high standards. Well, Lily, unfortunately, that is all the time we have left for today. But if students have follow-up questions or want to learn more about you or what you do, is it okay if they contact you? You are on LinkedIn. Yes, absolutely. Reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Lily. I really enjoyed talking to you today. And uh, thank you for joining us on the Lawrence University Career Center podcast. Thank you.